What's up, everybody? I'm Bear with BearIndependent.com. Today we're going to talk about why armor plate carriers are stupid for preppers. Now, as a caveat, as an asterisk, I have several videos at this channel, older videos about plate carriers set up and different types of plates and reviews of plate carriers and all of that. And I do think that there is a place for armor in a system within a preparedness context. But I also think most people that I've met who are into preparedness to the extent that they discuss armor are over-prioritizing body armor, soft armor or hard armor, hard plates. There's a lot of reasons for this, and I'll discuss a few of them with you now. The armor is part of a much larger system. The first thing we all need to understand is very few of us are military age males in the peak of our physicality with adequate training to shoot, move, communicate, sustain. Most people in the preparedness space focus on, to the extent that they do think about security, air quote, they focus on kit, they focus on firearms, they focus on body armor, maybe some helmets, maybe some nods, maybe, maybe an individual first aid kit, very rarely training to go with that. Um, and if they get super duper involved in all this, they'll do some small unit training, some patrolling, you know, at this IMT, I'm up, he sees me, I'm down, right? They'll do some of that. And all that stuff's good. But it only works within a much larger context. Shoot, move, communicate, sustain. See, you need to be able to shoot. And what and how you need to be able to shoot, that's up to you. Your own standards and SOPs. But, you know, a 10-inch target at 300 yards with your rifle from all positions, standing, kneeling, sitting, prone, reliably with your carbine, probably a good place to start. Can you do that with all of your kit on? And even if you can, anybody who's been there, done that, will tell you the shooting part is 1%, 1% of the overall picture of what it takes to get the job done. Doesn't mean you shouldn't know how to shoot. You should. And most people gravitate towards firearms like immediately because they solve immediate problems that can only be solved with the application of deadly force on target. So it makes sense, but people get stuck there. They plateau. And then they'll usually end up gear whoring. I need this piece of kit. I need that piece of kit. I need this plate carrier. And if I get this plate carrier, then I need this placard. And then I'm going to run this placard. And now I need a radio pouch. And I think I'm going to get some smoke grenades. So I'm going to get some smoke grenade pouches. And then I need a medical kit. And then I need a camelback to go on the back of that. And where am I going to put my radio? And now I need a way to route my radio. And I need a push to talk mic. And I think I might get an earpiece for that. And I need a way to carry a knife on here. And what about a set of, uh, you know, a multi-tool with some pliers in that? And yeah, the next thing you know, you end up with a plate carrier that weighs 30, 40 pounds. Most people can't or won't wear their plate carrier for any extended period of time uh, at that weight or greater weights. And then when you add in the weight of a rucksack and the weight of a rifle, and if you've got your war belt and your helmet and your nods, if you're a cool guy, you've got 100 plus pounds of gear. Shoot, move, communicate, sustain. If you can't move in that kit, you're better off not having it, says I. Because a static target in a firefight's gonna take rounds. And if you don't know small unit tactics, you're going to take rounds anyway, whether you're wearing that plate carrier or not. Plates, by and large, what do they cover? They cover our heart and our lungs. Why? Because if I sneak around into your heart or your lungs, you're going to expire, generally speaking, before I can get you to a higher level of care. You need a surgeon, right? So our heart and our lungs are very important. 
But there's lots of other places you can get shot, stabbed, or blown up, and bleed out and die. Pelvic girdle, anybody? It's a big deal. Mostly what plates do is they provide a level of confidence to the operator to go out there and operate because their vital organs are covered. Their most vital organs are covered. Not all of them are. Gut shot is a bad deal. If we're triaging patients, gut shot goes first. They need a surgeon. There's very little we can do for that person in the field. Gut shots, eviscerations, it, it's bad. They need a surgeon. Plates don't cover that. So, if your mobility is limited to the point that you can't maneuver because you're wearing the plates and you don't have the adequate training and physicality to be able to use the plates in a martial context, you're actually literally weighing yourself down at this point where in my mind you're better off not having them than to have them on in the first place. Additionally, now having said that, additionally, if we think about the context in which somebody's wearing plates, to the extent that plates matter, and we could, and many of y'all will in the comments, you will camp down on that one statement, and you'll give me a thousand reasons why you agree or disagree, because that's where your mind has gone with this conversation. What I'm going to ask you to do is pull back from that, out of the tactical boots on the ground, plate carrier on, round in the chamber, going to work, and think on the strategic level, okay? How do we get to the point where we need to have plates on in the first place? Offensively or defensively? First rule of guerrilla warfare, don't become decisively engaged. So if we take that to mind with our, you know, post-SHTF underground guerrilla operations supported by an auxiliary and an underground, don't become decisively engaged. If we're not becoming decisively engaged, that greatly negates the needs for plates in the first place. Doesn't mean you shouldn't have them. Doesn't mean that there aren't certain operations where, yeah, armor is a go. Everybody kid up. What about the logistics? See, think on this level, the strategic leadership level. How do you literally get to the point where you need plates? What's your transportation capability? What's your motor pool like? How well are the vehicles maintained? How much fuel do you have to be able to sustain operations in your AO? Are your vehicles blown? Do people know about them? Do you still have freedom of movement and the ability to maneuver in the area where you are? See, because I think in SHTF actual, which I would submit where the balloon is going up, it might not be all the way up yet, but it's going up, right? Freedom of movement and mobility are going to be restricted. And so, uh, as my buddy Saul likes to say, your LPCs, your leather personnel carriers, a.k.a. your boots, are likely to be your primary means of transportation. Logistics, do you have more boots? How long does it take for you to wear out a set of boots? How long you think this thing's going to go? Do you have enough boots to see you through? And can you, again, walk? Can you maneuver? Just walk with all your stuff on for four hours, eight hours, 24 hours, 72 hours with all your kit on. 10th Mountain Division, Afghanistan. Shed, I think they were issued 167 pounds of gear. And they started shedding weight like nobody's business. And got that down to around 80 pounds of gear. Still going up and down mountains. And these are, these are operators. Men who have been trained their enti the entirety of their adult life to do difficult things in difficult situations in the peak of their physicality. And they're like, we have too much stuff, bro. We have too much stuff. It's got to go. And in many cases, one of the things that went was body armor. Don't become decisively engaged, right? So back to transpo. How are you going to move to where you need the plate carriers? 
What about communications? Because communications moves at, or I'm sorry, logistics moves at the speed of communications. Do you have the ability to communicate? Primary, alternate, contingency, emergency, means and methods to make commo, as well as primary, alternate, contingency, emergency frequencies. Does everybody on your team know how to use those different means of communication? Do you have a bump plan for your vehicles? If one is, becomes disabled or breaks down, is there room in the other vehicles to onboard the individuals that were in the broken down vehicle? And is there room to put all their kit and all the gear? Do you have tow straps and the ability to tow the vehicle out of the way? Or are we just going to abandon it? What's the bump plan? Do you know how to navigate? Are we familiar with the AO? Do we know where we're going? How are we navigating? We're we using map and compass. Do we have maps? Do we have compasses? Do we, did anybody read the FM? Do we know how to use these damn things? We're going to use GPS. Does GPS even still work because it's SHTF? How are we going to get there? What about the mission planning? What's the op word? What are we doing when we get there? What are the actions on the objective? Have we rehearsed the actions on the objective? How many times? Have we rehearsed the actions on the objective? Are we utilizing the one-third, two-third planning model? What support elements do we have? What's the MET-TC? What are we going to do when we get there? What's our EPW plan? Right? What's our CCP, casualty collection point? What's our EVAC plan? Who's our QRF? Who constitutes the reserve? How are we coordinating all of that? What's HQ? simple. Who's our left and right security? Where's the ORP? Can you make hits with your rifle? Is your rifle zeroed? Do you have good weapons handling? Is the rifle a piece of garbage and it's going to have malfunctions? What kind of ammunition are you using? Is it military grade ammunition with a sealed primer or is it cheap crap? And now it's raining and we're walking around in the rain, you know, because we have to patrol into the release point so that we can go do this thing that required the plate carrier in the first plate, the first place, and all the ammunition got soaking wet because it's pouring rain and nobody brought ponchos. And now your crap ammunition is no good. See, logistics wins wars. And so we can argue all day and all night about whether or not you need plate carriers? And the answer is yes. Do we not need plate carriers? Yes. Do we need plate carriers? Yes. Who makes the best plates? Lots of people. Where should I buy them from? I don't know, whoever has the best price right now. Our friends at Adventure Frontier sell plates, they're good, I have some. If you're looking for some, you could go there, but this is not a shameless plug for them. AdventureFrontier.com is the website. He's a friend of mine, has been for a long time, since before I had my own store. He helped us launch Refuge Medical. Excellent guy. But the point is, the answer is yes. Do we bring plates? Met TC. Mission. Enemy. Time. Terrain. Troops available, enemy, and effects on civilian populace. That's your planning phase. You decide way before you go to this thing whether or not you need plates. What's the specific threat level? That gets back to intel. What intelligence do you have in order to be able to plan and rehearse your actions on the objective that support the strategic initiatives, that support the mission? What's the mission statement? What are we trying to do? How are we going to do it? It's so much more than, I'm a prepper, should I buy some plates? And I get this question all the time. It comes up on every Thirsty Thursday live stream that we do. Everyone. I've gotten it dozens of times here in the comments on YouTube. Should I buy plates? What kind of plates should I buy? Like, yes. The answer is Yes. But if you don't have answers to all those other questions that I asked, it doesn't matter if you have plates. By the way, because of the proliferation of body armor on the battlefield, the Mozambique drill, two to the chest, one to the head, nobody does that anymore. 
operators who operationally operate don't do that anymore because the likelihood of there being armor in the chest negates the, re the reasoning for putting two rounds in the chest. So either we're shooting the box right here, the eye box, easy practice right there, three by five index card, hang that and aim for that. Get really good at sneaking rounds into the box or modified Mozambique, two to the pelvic girdle, one to the head. And see the pelvic girdle, not only do you have both femoral arteries, one on each side of your hip cavities, pelvic girdle being your hips, not only do you have two blood hoses, the diameter of your thumb running through there, which makes it very easy for you to bleed out that fast. It's a mechanical stoppage because it's the largest joint in your body. And if you destroy the hip socket, you are tied up, you can't move. And you now have to render aid in a very difficult spot to render self aid at. And now I've tied up somebody else who needs to assist you to do a medal of honor run to drag you out of the firefight and then start working on you. So now the plates don't matter anymore anyway. And so the point of this video is to get you out of thinking tactically and get you to start thinking strategically. And I realize it's going to be an unpopular video. And I want you to realize I don't care. I'm not here to say the things that everybody else is going to say to sell armor for a particular company or sell plate carriers for a particular company. This is not third party advertising. Nobody pays me to make my videos or do my reviews. I'm not a gear whore and I'm not a gear salesman. I don't care. I don't want good people to end up dead. And that's why I made this video. I want you to honestly think about, do you have answers to all of those questions? Because if you do have answers to all of those questions, then you get to decide whether or not you should run plates. If you don't have questions to all of those, or don't have answers to all of those questions, it doesn't matter if you have plates or not. I appreciate y'all. If you're new here and you found some value in this, consider subscribing. If you're not new here and you found some value in this, share it with somebody you think needs to see it. Bless y'all. Shalom.